hello everybody. We are Cristina Pajor de Maiti and the other speaker is Aida Schulz. We are both from the University of Ljubljana from Slovenia and today we would like to tell you um, the lessons we learned during the Frank project. Aida, move forward. Thanks. Um, in this project, our main goal was to improve understanding of hateful discourse on social media. We approached um, this task from three different uh, angles, namely from social science, humanities and computer science. And just for clarification, uh, we were interested, for example, in uh, things such as um, how frequent and how radical is hate speech on social media, uh, what are the typical linguistic features of hateful discourse, and uh, how to build a robust annotation schema that would be applicable across languages and cultures. Um, so, based on, on this research interest, we saw that um, we will have to closely cooperate if we want to create a data set which would include uh, enough metadata and additional annotation layers that would provide enough information later on um, to, to be useful for um, uh, all the disciplines involved and beyond. And the second thing, um, we saw this project as uh, an encouragement, as a, a great opportunity um, to, to search for possibilities how to share methodological approaches uh, and also the background knowledge in order to um, to better interpret our results and to, to provide a um, comprehensive um, uh, comprehensive uh, view of the phenomenon. Now I'm passing uh, the floor to Aida. Okay, so the first step was to define our common goals. For all of us, especially for social sciences and humanities needs, it was very important to work on authentic communication data, meaning we wanted to analyze the existing real life cases. According to that, we choose to extract Facebook comments on news posts. Second, we needed a big enough data set, so enough comments for quality quantitative analysis and successful machine learning, but still not too big for manual annotation. So we agreed we will include posts from the most viewed media outlets who use their official Facebook profile for news sharing and where enough comments are being posted. And last, we realized we need a relevant sample of comments with enough hateful discourse to analyze it. If we took random comments, probably most of them would be neutral. So we decided to take comments from news posts about controversial topics at that time being migrants or refugees, and LGBT community. For Slovene data, we choose top three Slovene news media outlets, program the extraction of the most relevant news posts on given topics, and then prepared around 11,000 comments for further annotation. But before we started annotation process, we needed to build a robust annotation schema that would, of course, um, that would meet the needs of all the disciplines. And here, our first contradictions show up. First dilemma was the question, what are we researching? We started to talk about hate speech, but we met this first obstacle of different understanding of the term. For sociologists, hate speech is a narrow concept, primarily meaning expressing hate towards a person or a group based on their background, such as race, religion, sexual orientation, etc., and mostly towards minorities. Meanwhile, from linguistics and computational linguistics point of view, that was not so important. They could analyze any offensive or, or violent speech. Because of those disagreements, we formed a new term for our research problem, and that was socially unacceptable discourse that we are still using for this project. Related to this, it was also very important for sociology research to recognize whether the target of the offensive or violent speech is attacked based on his or her background or not. The next question was whether to consider the context or not. For social sciences and humanities, the social context of the communication is very important, while computer science is only able to consider the code text. Nevertheless, we choose to include the context in annotation decisions. 
similar was with borderline cases where hate is rather indirectly stated. Sociologists are also interested in those. On the other hand, they could significantly disrupt the machine learning process. So we did not want to recognize them as hateful. And all those dilemmas led to a complex two-level schema as shown here on the slide. Even though we trained our students before they started annotating, because of that complexity, they had quite some problems categorizing the cases. Besides, we realized that a lot in annotating also depends on the annotator's language, context, and topic knowledge. But nevertheless, their agreement was quite high, around 80%, so we were able to do some quality analysis. Christina? Uh, so what are the things that we will carry over to other projects? Uh, first, even though there is probably no such thing as too much time in our projects, um, we believe that cutting down on the time that is dedicated to regular discussion is a bad practice. Um, taking the necessary time for discussions, not just answering some pre-prepared uh, questions, is in our opinion really crucial. Um, because otherwise, possible misunderstandings can go unnoticed. Uh, this happened... Um, in our team because we all believe that we understand what is the scope of uh, the term hate speech based on the answers provided by social scientists but only discussions later on where everybody were able to share their ideas revealed that our understanding is not yet harmonized. Second, in our next project, we will try to secure enough time for brainstorming sessions and uh, we will try to work on real data from the beginning. Uh, in our project, we initially helped ourselves with made up data, um, but this proved as much less efficient than working with real life data. And third, we learned that it's really crucial to know all the work that is done on the data set uh, and to inform others about our decisions. Uh, we saw that in a multidisciplinary team, we can have a very different understanding of what is important and what is not. Um, so how should we deal with um, the comments without a dominant tag? Uh, should we put them in separate sections? Should we just discard them and so on? Next, uh, we saw that on many occasions, um, it's um, never too much uh, of listening to the others and um, of learning from them. On the one hand, this helps us better understand their needs and consequently, uh, we can understand why they cannot accept certain compromises. And on the other hand, we can see the positive impact of certain attitude, attitudes. For example, the strictness of social scientists in methodological questions. So we can incorporate um, their approaches into our work. Uh, and even more, we can also enrich uh, our research with very practical techniques from other disciplines. Um, for example, using corpus linguistic methods in sociology. Uh, and uh, third, discussions among the team members help better understand the complexity of the research process and the studied phenomenon. Uh, in our case, we can say that uh, social scientists made a great contribution toward uh, a more ethical approach of the whole team uh, towards the data and people involved. Um, next slide. We also learned um, the hard way, actually, that uh, it's really, really important to be on the same page regarding the terms for the concepts used, um, regarding their definitions, as well as regarding the overall scope of the research. And last, in our next uh, interdisciplinary project, we will try to simplify as much as possible. Uh, this project was um, really a great learning opportunity. We saw that compromises are inevitable, but also that we don't want to, neither we need to settle for simplistic solutions. Uh, so even though we would all prefer a simple schema, uh, precisely because of cross-disciplinary cooperation, we understood that um, using a simple schema would not give us the corpus that would um, offer enough information for uh, all the research interest we, were, uh, we wanted to, um, to study. 
And our very last takeaway is to be sure uh, to manage our expectations in um, the, our next projects, because we experienced that uh, in interdisciplinary uh, team, all tasks uh, take more time than in a homogeneous team. But we also saw that the final results, as well as all the knowledge uh, gained throughout the process, prove that it's worth all the effort. Thanks.